Hey guys, uh, this is Kyle, aka Vulcan Wolverine, aka Vulcan Wolverine 2. It is 6.20 p.m. on May the 14th, 2019. Uh, first of all, I wanted to make, I just want to make a short video to do some updates and uh, some really important information put out by TrueStream Media. Um, first of all, I just want to wish everybody, especially all targeted individual women, a happy belated Mother's Day. I hope you had a good one. And even if you didn't, you know, you can just, whatever, whenever you do have a good day, just, uh, you know, make that your Mother's Day. But, um, you know, even if you're not like a, um, a mother, like you still are a mother of this earth and you are really appreciated. And all of you women, targeted individuals are so beautiful and courageous. Um, and I just wish I could fix this for you guys. Um, wish I could fix this for all of us. Um, but I just, I just wanted to say that happy Mother's Day. I had a pretty good Mother's Day. Um, hung out with my family. Kind of, I've gotten pretty good at, um, at not kind of pushing, pushing the targeting aside and enjoying being with my family over many, many years. It's been really hard. But I've gotten to a point where I can do it pretty successfully. You know, my mom was saying how it was like her the best Mother's Day she's had, and is it is a um is very happy for me. Um, you know, I gave my my mom, my grandma, some orchids and stuff. So very good Mother's Day. Um, you know, sometimes we do just have to push the targeting aside and enjoy the people in our life as much as we can. So we'll have those happy memories. So when it gets really hard. You know, it's, it's kind of boosted me a little bit. I'm like, oh man, I had a great time on Saturday and Sunday. My brother did a crawfish boil. And then the next day, my, my aunt barbecued. And, um, you know, we all kind of sat around and just just talked about kind of little stuff. Um, and it really made me happy. It gave me a boost to be able to deal with, you know, what we have to deal with. Okay, so happy Mother's Day to everybody. Especially, well, I guess uh, target individual women. Uh, I guess I wouldn't say Happy Mother's Day to you guys out there. Um, second update: um, the this the CES Ultra electromagnetic transcranial stimulation device. Good news, it's working a lot better than I thought it would work. Uh, complaint: one complaint, uh, one complaint. Um, it chafes the ears a little bit. I have these attachments that fit on the ears and it does kind of create like a tingling sensation because it is an electromagnetic frequency you want to keep your ears like really really moist if you do get an electromagnetic transcranial stimulation device because it's kind of chafing my ears a little bit I don't use it like you know I think for for normal people people who aren't being directly targeted this device would be used for like depression anxiety sleeplessness but uh, they would use it like maybe 45 minutes or 30 minutes then st and stop. And my hair is getting really long. I gotta go get a haircut soon. This is ridiculous. I make a little ponytail for myself. Um, but like a person who is just using this for depression or anxiety, you know, they, they would switch it because you can switch it to like 30 minutes. Uh, Y'all can't see this, but there's a little thing for 30 minutes or 45 minutes or continuous. Now I've been doing it continuous during the day, um, and it's like I mean it, it it's really really helping. Like I'll give you an example of of one thing that's helping. Like when I make these videos, my attackers will give me that fake uh, physical anxiety. Like it's not a mental anxiety. Like I'm not anxious about making the video or whatever. Uh, they give me that physical anxiety or when I'm talking to people who it's really important that I have a good conversation with them to me, you know, um, it, it helps that a lot. Like it, it tones that down. So a, a really good thing about this that I think is going to come out of it that, that I'm going to be able to figure out is what is, what is um, you know, what is our attackers creating like functioning, functioning MRI type fields around our head uh, hacking into the vestibular system, uh, you know, um, stimulating nerves, stimulating nerves under the cranium, under under our skin on our head. 
like what is that what what things are what things are attackers using that for and what is deep brain stimulation which i think would be the bi-directional stream of like like actual light that's going through that's going through to nanotechnology or to actual regions of our brain so i'm going to try and figure that out i haven't like it's it's affecting everything uh, in a positive way like the v2k goes down when I take it off, the V2K goes back up. So it, the V2K is like very, very um, scattered. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's it's muffled, very muffled when I use the device. I kind of want to sit like this so my hair doesn't show. Um, but it's it's surprise. It's a good thing. It's working a lot better than I thought that it would work. Um, I guess I got to be honest with you guys. Uh, you know, I'm happy about that, right? I'm feeling, I feel a little bit better. I'm still getting tortured. I'm still tired. You know, um, it, it interferes with what my attackers are doing. I'm a little bit, uh, I'm like, okay, well, great. This works for me. I spent $270 on it, which knocked, is going to knock me down for like a month or two months. You know, I'm going to have to really do without uh, a lot of things. Um, maybe even like electronic cigarettes. I'm not going to be able to. I mean, I guess that's that's not too bad, but I'm like, you know, I just don't think a lot of targeted individuals are gonna spend two hundred and seventy dollars on the device. So I'm like, it works, that's great, but like, I guess I guess that's all I can do is like try this and then tell y'all it's working, and then, you know, if you can't afford, I wish I could buy everyone, you know, one of these. Now the the good thing is, and so so it's kind of depressing. It's like, yeah, I found something that that really works, and like. Especially like using this during the day, using the uh, electromagnetic transcranial stimulation device during the day, and then at night using Dave Case's CD, and then I'm, I'm using all those other defenses too. My attackers are having to switch up things day and night. They have to switch things really fast. So I'm making my attacker's job jobs really hard, uh, and the automated systems job really hard. So. I'm very happy about that. I just do, I'm like, mm, nobody's going to buy this. You know, it's $270, even if it's like, yes, it definitely works. Like, it definitely works. I'm still going to give updates. Um, I'm still going to give updates, you know, you know, going, moving forward, because I'm going to keep using it. But that makes me a little bit sad. I'm like, it's just, it's so expensive. You know, it's $270. Um, I have it in my mind. I'm like, what's $270? Uh, versus like actually you know actually uh, defending from a lot of the stuff our attackers are doing interfering with it two hundred seventy dollars is like nothing to me not nothing to me but you know what I'm saying compared to like feeling a lot better um, I don't know there's the, but there's che the good news is there's cheaper ones out there there are some that are like eighty dollars I think there are some that are sixty dollars. I don't see why those would be any different. I guess I, I you know, I have to look into it more because when I bought this one, I thought that I would be able to actually pick the frequency, but it's actually just, you know, general frequencies and you can increase the amplitude. Um, so I'm thinking that's what the, the less expensive devices are going to be like too. I just don't see why it would be, um, the, the less expensive ones would be any less effective. So that's what I'm seeing right now. That's the, the good thing. But it's really working, guys. I'm going to give you all more updates because you know how our attackers do. But there's, like, you know, with remote neural manipulation, uh, my attackers will inject a visual and an emotion and an inner voice thought all at the same time. Like, the automated system will do those things. Now, since I've been using this, while I'm using it, because if I stop using it, they kind of get things back in... It takes a little while, but not that long, like an hour or two hours, you know, thing, things will start kind of feeling up at the same level they were before I started using that. I'm hoping that longer usage of it will um, will change that, you know, it will be more cumulative, it'll knock my attackers off for longer and cause them a lot of, uh, a lot of struggle to try and get that radio receiver signal back with my brain and my nervous system. Um, I forgot what I was saying. I forgot what I was talking about. Um, but the, like those, I actually remembered. I actually, see that, okay, that was my point. My attackers just did a memory kind of attack. It was a memory attack with remote neural manipulation, but it was quicker. It, it like came in and then buffered out quicker. 
So with a lot of the remote neural manipulation stuff, and especially with the surface, like when you get when your attackers make you really sleepy or really anxious or really depressed, and they're using that, they're they're using a form of uh, functioning MRI electromagnetic transcranial stimulation to do a lot of that, stimulating the vestibular nerves in your ears, your eyes, under your um, you know under your head and stuff like that. Now, if I have this on, it's like they'll do that, but it'll it'll like I'll it'll I can tell it's really artificial and it'll kind of just buffer out real quick. It'll be like do like that, just like that memory thing that just happened. Now it didn't last as long. So so I guess my point is very very positive, more so than what I thought it was going to be. I was kind of like a little bit I was negative about it. I've been I've been fighting a lot of negativity. I'm sure you guys do too. We've been going through this so long and I just get depressed and I'm like, oh, this is going to be another thing. I'm going to buy it, you know, but a lot of defenses for me have worked. So I have that kind of, have that hopeful, you know, experience to kind of fight against, oh, you know, this isn't going to help as much as I want it to help. Helps a lot better than I thought it would. Um, and it really fits along with the hypothesis that that uh, a lot of people have about functioning MRI fields around our head that are doing uh, electromagnetic transcranial stimulation. So just want to do a short update on that. Kind of want to keep this video short. Um, yeah, so I wanted to let y'all know about that. I'm very happy about it, but it's that it's that negative feeling that I get like, oh, well, people aren't going to buy it. You know, I'm going to tell people about it and they're going to be like, that's great, Kyle. But $270, no way. Um, and I wish that I had a, a fix for that. I wish I had a solution to just buy everybody one. Um, but this is what I can do. You know, I, I got it with my, you know, with my disability money. Uh, ugh. Um, and you know, probably I'll probably be eating grits and oatmeal uh, for the rest of the uh, for the rest of this month at least at least and then probably next month but uh but it was very very worth it the 270 dollars i'm like boy i can sit i can you know i'm not i'm not not being targeted like the the targeting has not ended but it's affecting it in such a positive way it's affecting the way that my body is reacting and my brain and my nervous system are reacting to some of the the uh, from what i can tell right now all of the remote neural manipulation which I didn't expect. I, I expected some of the deeper brain stimulation, like vi the, the uh, manipulating the visual cortex, uh, inner voice stuff, uh, things like that. I didn't think that it would affect those. Probably the thing that it affects the least, well, external hits. Um, it's not doing much for external hits, but that's why I use grounding, and that's why I use this too. But the thing that it probably has the less, the least effect on um, that I can tell right now is the V2K. It kind of mumbles the V2K a little bit after like after I'm using it for like an hour, or 30 minutes to an hour, and then when I take it off, um, you know, the V2K will reach the same kind of level. Uh, it's it's very weird because the way you perceive that V2K is just you know, humans haven't done that before like actually hearing something in your inner ear that sounds directional because it's a signal going down to the inner ear. Uh, but that's probably the thing that it, um, you know, least affects. That's the, V2K is the hardest thing. Uh, and I th I've talked to other TIs and some of uh, some TIs and I've, I've had some success with defending uh, for V2K too. Um, but, uh, but it's um, it's definitely the, the kind of the one of the trickiest things that they do, you know. Um, I really like this. I, I really like because I always get they, my my attackers when I would moderate calls and when I do um, you know when I do videos they will always give me this physical anxiety and it's not anything. It's like before I make the video, before I moderate, I'm not. I don't have like butterflies in my stomach. I've been doing this a long time. I've gotten used to it. You know, I've gotten used to just talking on video and I, you know, just gotten used to it. I'm comfortable with it, but. Um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to get a ponytail thing. That's one thing that is really good, and you guys will probably see me wearing this. And most people will probably just think it's headphones or something like that for the video, so I don't think it'll look too weird. Um, but you'll probably be seeing me wear these uh, when I do videos because I just feel like I can think better, I feel better, 
Uh, definitely d did not end the targeting. My targeting is not gone, but it's affecting it in such a positive way. And that's what we got to remember. Uh, I don't, I, I don't see any silver bullets right now for defense. Um, and some, you know, I don't see any silver bullets uh, for defense. So uh, adding things together, grounding. Uh, there's got to be a less expensive way than this less EMF headgear because I've had to buy so much. This is the buying this is more expensive than the uh, electromagnetic transcranial stimulation device, but there has to be something cheap like this that we can stack on our head. But this really works together with the grounding, together with Dave Case's CD, together with supplements, cleansing, and this is definitely a tool now in my arsenal. Um, and I know a lot of you guys you know, probably some of you, I don't know, I, I, guess, I guess all of you probably see the value in defense. You know, um, we've got to try and tone down the intensity of these attacks, these attacks so we can fight this better, so we can think better, so we can strategize better, so we can explain ourselves better, so we're not, you know, flying off the handle when we're, you know, because when you feel like you're being murdered, which, you know, I kind of still feel like that, but it's toned down it's bearable, right? Um, goes on and on and on, which is a tough thing, but right now it feels bearable, right? Um, it, it, but when you're in a state of like, oh my God, I can't make it another day, and you go and try and explain this or get help or anything like that, you know, people are just gonna see you as a crazy person. So I feel like the calmer we are and the more that we can get defenses, it's gonna help us to move forward. Plus, um, prepare for the worst, hope for the best, I hope this program ends this year, but we've got to prepare for a, I hate saying this, uh, but it feels, this is a process, and this will end, this program will end, unless, unless humanity's done. I mean, in that case, if they keep this program going and drawing people in, and they keep doing this, and just to destroy our whole city, and that, and that just happens, you know, the, you know, but if, if society is going to keep going and we're going to have countries still and civilization, this program will have to end. But it is a process. You know, it is a process to end this. And we need God's help. You know, um, it's just not going to be a, um, it's not going to be a, like, a one hitter, quitter thing. It's going to be all this stuff that we're doing, everything we're putting on social media, uh, class action suits, individual court cases. Uh, some of the local uh, local news, you know, picking this stuff up. Where it's gonna, you know, these big national Cuban embassy and China consulate. It's a process of those things changing public perception, and then the power behind public perception will win class action suits because the authorities will have to act when the public is outraged, right? But it is a process. So I'm just saying, and you know, miracles happen. I hope that you know I'm preparing. That's the worst case scenario that this is a this is going to a process that may take a couple more years. Um, it'll get better and better as we go, though. So I want to I just I want to give encouragement and hope because this will get better. We will get more help. There will be more defensive things. This like I don't know if anybody if anybody else out there has tried one of these. Um, let me know in the comments. Be like, did it help or did it not? This seems like it's really, really helping from remote neural manipulation, for remote neural manipulation. I mean, just what I'm doing right now is completely affected. Because usually if I wasn't doing this, I would be like, I'd feel like my chest was caving in, and I'd, I'd be like, uh, uh, that's how I feel. I know I don't sound like that, but that's how I feel, like when I do a video. Because not because I'm nervous about the video, because my attackers are doing electromagnetic transcranial stimulation only negatively this is is positive reinforcement electromagnetic transcranial stimulation to the nervous system in the brain uh, it's just it's really working so I'll, I'll cut it short I always uh, babble on a lot I really wanted to just show um, yeah that's that's all the updates most important one being happy Mother's Day all you beautiful women out there um, it's a it's you know there are no words for the evil that this society and some of the men at the top are doing to you beautiful women um, and there are men out there who really care we really care um, and we're fighting for you
you know, the best we can. You know, I see all these TI guys out there, they're fighting for, and you guys, like I was telling, I was talking to a beautiful targeted individual woman on the phone the other day, and um, I was like, I think you guys are going to have to fix this. <laughs> I was kind of just joking, you know, we've got to fix it together, but I've just seen such really courageous, strong women, they get things done, they get things done, they do it, they do it, they do what they need to do, um, and they work with other people very well. There are men that, that do that, you know, so I'm not, I'm not dogging on men or anything. I really am hating that, that long hair. Okay, so, um, so let me get to this information. Uh, this is an article from Activist Post, uh, Alternative News and Independ uh, Independent Views. This is an article about the gang stalking part of targeting. Um, and let me get, let me read some of this. This article is by Melissa Dykes, and then I'm going to show a video um, by uh, by True Stream Media, which Melissa and Aaron Dykes do. She's a she is a true journalist. Um, support those guys in any way that you can because they're really talking about important like news like globally important stuff that people need to know for their survival um, you know we you know all of all of us as targeted individuals are, are talking about it and it's very important um, they just they, you know the editing they edit things great they have a good just good production value good videos and stuff like that and it's very important that's really important in today's media. Social media or mainstream media, people are used to good production values. Um, I, uh, when I started making these videos, I, I guess, yeah, naive. Um, a lot of people call me naive. Um, and I, I am for a purpose. I'd rather remain a little bit naive because you can change the world in very positive ways if you don't go there, if you don't go to the dark place, right? You don't, you don't let your head go to the darkest place you can in situations. You can do a lot better. You can help a lot more people. You can change people for the better. Um, but I really thought, you know, hey, I'm just talking on my phone and I'm getting out this important information. The information is going to be popular because people want to survive, right? And this is important information. Eh, it's a little bit foolish. You, when you're talking, when you're putting out important information, you need to make it somehow kind of entertaining, uh, you know, um, I, I don't see why I think it's important, but, but it's true. And I've seen a lot of people that are very creative and they, they know that they got their finger on the pulse. I'm going to tr start trying to do better on that. Uh, but honestly, guys, I just want to be honest. I don't know. I, 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 I was supposed to stop doing videos like on the November video bomb, not this past November, but the November before. Because I'm just, you know, I, I, I've just talked about this for so long, and I'm going through it, and I'm just trying, I want to balance what I'm doing about this. Uh, and there's so many people speaking out on YouTube. I'm going to keep making videos, just the, um, I just don't know how, you know, how much I'm going to be making videos. And, and you know, I'm going to be making videos, it just depends. So, like I say, like, I want to do all this stuff, and you know, make my editing better and like actually edit some documentaries together. Um, but I might, what I might do is just stop making so many videos and then edit some good, some good pieces for us. I don't know. Um, I got to think about that and then the money to get, to get a good, you know, good editing program. I got to check out what I have right now. I think I have a free one, but it puts a watermark on everything. Okay, let me, uh, let's, let's get started with this, guys. Uh, so, former Merck employee targeted for harassment, intimidation after speaking out against forced vaccinations. And this is by Melissa Dykes um, from August 3rd, 2015. Uh, this was in 2015? I think the video they put out on YouTube is even more recent. So, this has been out since 2015? Wow, how did I just find out about this? Like, because this, uh, this is a targeted individual who is a high-profile targeted individual, you know. Um, so, once upon a time, Brandy Vaughn worked as a, I think we're all high-profile targeted individuals. Like, I think we're all worth the same. But, like, I've got to admit, society works a certain way. People with the title of doctor or politician or, you know, they, they're doing this or that. And they're looked at differently 
in the public. They're a higher profile. People listen to them more, uh, which is I, I kind of want to go back and like get a doctorate um, so I can say I'm a doctor. Um, you know, people would maybe because I think people, well, I'm, I'm not going to go into that. But it, it is. It's how our system is built. It's how ev it's how this evil happens. It's because you know doctors in the mainstream. It's good in a, in a sense that we got Doctor Horton on our side. You know we've got Doctor Eric Karlstrom. Um, you know we've got we got a lot of doctors. So it's Doctor uh, Robert Duncan. So it helps us in that way. But um, on the other side, there are a lot of doctors. And I guess they are really their accredited doctors, but they just say, oh, this isn't happening, and that's it's mental illness and stuff like that. And then people listen to them, you know. Um, Y'all know what I mean, though. It's a society is set up so a title means more. Um, I don't see, I've never seen that. Like, when I, when I interact with people, it's like, how smart is that person? I never thought about titles or anything like that. I guess, I, I guess when you go to the doctor, you do listen to them more. That's kind of, it's changed for me. Like, all the authority, like, trusting authority implicitly has got us to this point. But I see some, I see even in the target individual community, we still go to authority. We're still work, we're still caught in the system of, like, does this person have a doctor in their name? What, what kind of company do they work for or whatever? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to get into that. Um, and it's good in certain cases. Like for Dr. Horton, it's it's good. That's a good thing. Dr. Robert Duncan, that's it's a good thing that people listen to them more. Um, I just cannot make a short video and just get the information out, can I? Um, okay, so once upon a time, Brandy Vaughn worked as a, a sales rep for Merck and Company. Uh, Merck and, uh, I guess Merck and Company, selling a deadly drug called Vioxx which hurt and killed a lot of people. Uh, Brandy found out that her employer did this with prior knowledge that this drug was dangerous. Uh, she quit and began to question the entire healthcare system, including the vaccinations that pediatricians later attempted to push on her infant son. Now Brandy speaks out against vaccinations like the ones peddled by pharma giant Merck. She has been a loud opponent in the fight against forced vaccination bills like SB 277, speaking at multiple protests and rallies against this blatant medical tyranny. I didn't know that this was like so far back in 2015, and I can't believe I did not see this story, or, or another target individual didn't like tell me about this. Um, but that's, you know, that's why I'm talking about it right now. Um, a video was sent to us made by YouTuber Andrew Liebich detailing the kind of intimidation and harassment that Brandy has been suffering of late. This isn't your average case of harassment. Someone or several someones has not only gone at length to break into Brandy's home on multiple occasions, but to let Brandy know her home is being invaded each time in the most obvious ways possible. Uh, they presented her with her lost hide key almost like a present on her doorstep. Does this sound familiar, guys? Does this kind of targeting, this kind of gang stalking sound familiar? Mm-hmm. Uh, once she changed the locks and put in an expensive home security system, whoever it was picked her um, picked her new locks. Sorry, guys. Excuse me. Picked her new locks. My mouth is like really dry. Hmm. Excuse me, y'all. It's just, it's a, it's a big difference. Like, having this on and using this when I do videos, it's a completely different feeling. I don't feel like I have to rush. I don't feel that rushed feeling, like I've got to get every word out before I forget it. And I, I'm, I'm a little bit calmer. Yeah, you know, I'm a type A personality, which I hate. I was never a type A personality in my life um, before the targeting. Um... It just, it's, it, it really is, it's really working good. I'm going to give y'all more updates on it, though, because um, I want to see what my attackers are doing. It, it, this is working, and it fits along with what I was thinking was going on, you know, uh, for some of it, you know, integrated, we integrated directed energy weapon systems, integrated neuro weapon systems. So they're doing a bunch of things. They're doing a bunch of different things from a remote platform. Um... Okay, so, um, 
items that she had hidden have been moved around in her home and left out to let her know someone was there doing it. A ladder from her garage was taken out and left open under her bedroom window. These are blatant acts of intimidation meant to scare her and let her know she's being watched, and that apparently her home and possibly her phone and anything else connected to the internet is bugged. And I would say, and I said this when I watched the video and I'll show you all the video, I was like, they can just bug you. Like, they don't have to put bugs in your home. They can just use, they can just surveil through you. Um, and people have to realize that. It's time. It's time. Even if you're not a targeted individual watching this video, they can, sur they can bug you to even know what your inner voice is thinking and stuff like that. They tap into you with electromagnetic, uh, you know, electromagnetic frequencies. Um, they can see through your eyes. Basically, they're just getting a visual from your, op uh, you know, your occipital uh, lobe. Um, that always happens. Like, I've seen other targeted individuals. I forgot to turn my phone off. I always turn it off before I do videos because it never fails that I will get a text or a call during the video. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Okay. Uh, but, but like, you know, when I was watching... See, it was quick. It was very quick. This is good. This is good. Oh, my God. Okay, um, you know, I wanted to say... I wanted to scream at this late... Not scream at this late, but I wanted to scream at the video. They don't have to put little bugs in your house. They probably do. They do because it's, like, redundant systems. If this fails, they want to have this kind of surveillance. But they can tap into you, you know. They can tap into you, and they can hear what you hear. And they can hear what you say, and they can see what you see. Remote neural monitoring. So that's that's what Pete. That's surveillance has gotten that far along now. Everyone and targeted individuals, who are probably the most people watching my videos. You all know this. It's so important. This is just we got to start realizing this, so it can just come out in the public, and then the public can start dealing with it, and we can actually have like moral committees. Uh, more like our, you know, governments really talking about this so that people have to stop using it on such an immoral level. And it's completely possible. It's completely possible. It's just a process. It's just a process that, you know, that we have to go through as Americans and other countries that have this. But it's completely possible that this comes out in the public and people know about it so that they're like, okay, well if we're targeting somebody and they tell somebody the people know about this technology now and they will believe them so the, then they'll have to stop because it won't be hidden right um so it's completely po it, it's going to happen it's going to happen it's just when that is a truth that is a hundred percent truth um okay so uh items items did i already read that a ladder from her garage was taken out and left open under her bedroom window. Uh, they, these are blatant acts of intimidation meant to scare her and let her know she's being watched, and that apparently her home and possibly her phone and anything else connected to the internet is uh, to the internet is bugged. So I read that. Uh, these sick bastards even bought her uh, a duck statue and left it on a table on her back patio facing her home. Brandy believes this is to let her know she's a sitting duck. I get that too. Uh, when I'm driving around, I'll get vehicular harassment from uh, exterminating companies like Terminex and then the local ones too because they're trying to give me this message of, you know, you're a bug and we're going to exterminate you. So they give you little messages with their gang stalking and their, their gaslighting tactics. Um, these are not your average home burglars. These are seemingly high-connected intimidation and harassment professionals. And, and that it is a business. It is a business, and there are DHS fusion centers, InfraGuard. Now, with this one, um, with this case, let me, let me finish reading. I'm extremely concerned for Brandy's welfare at this time. Moreover, this shows you the extreme desperation the system is under if they would stoop this low. And they're stooping low. You know, uh, not only is Big Pharma paying off senators like Dr. Richard Pan to co-sponsors bills to force the population to take their dan dangerous cocktails, but they would threaten and intimidate former employees who attempt to speak out about this. And, and like, I'm going to play the video from Truthstream Media. I might not play the whole thing, but, but I'll definitely put the links um, 
I'll definitely put the links in, in the description of my video. Uh, but, you know, I see this, this situation. When did they put this out? Hold on. I see this situation. I think this was recent. No, no. This was on August 3rd, 2015. Uh, with this, you know, she worked for a certain corporation uh, selling Vioxx for the Merck Corporation, and then she started speaking out against vaccination. So probably the company that, it, uh, it, you know, because military industrial complex, uh, that company that she was speaking out against uh, probably had, you know, has a connection to contractors and subcontractors. They may actually have people in a certain department in that company to do some of the stalking and whatever because it's just flowing into each other the military industrial complex is flowing into each other you know so so her um or you know or they could have just put her in the program like they could have had connections somebody at the company said put her in that she's dangerous she's speaking out against vaccines and vaccines or they, you know whatever kind of crazy thing vaccines are safe and she's uh putting the public in danger so we need to get her on that list and then she's a subcontractor, you know, handles her, her target. I don't know if she's targeted with weapons, but um, I do. I think if you're being gang stalked, that you are being at least remote neural monitored at the very least. And, and that's what I believe. You guys comment below if you, if you don't, if you have a different opinion uh, or a different view on it. Um, but if somebody at that company may have just had connections, like the, the uh, head of the company may have had connections with this program and then it may actually be people from DHS fusion centers or InfraGuard doing the gaslighting and gang stalking kind of because they're you know because she was just put into it now I think that it's I think it's the former I think that it's like people who it's like specific uh, specific uh, gang stalkers that are corporate like private investigators or something like that from a sub a contractor subcontractor uh this gets really complicated because it's like they're doing it in so many areas of society different businesses and corporations are doing this you know even scientology does this and hires pis and stuff like that uh to harass and gang stalk people but i think that it would be uh that she probably is not being gang stalked by dhs fusion centers um uh, in InfraGuard, but it's more likely some uh, private investigators subcontracting out the gang stalking. Like this corporation is paying them to do it. Um, and I would think that she's probably remote neural monitored um, if she's being gang stalked. Because that's just, I feel like that's how it works. You know, because they want every bit of surveillance on you that they can get to know what you're doing, where you're going, when you're going, and everything like that. I hope she isn't. I hope I'm wrong. Like, I hope that I'm wrong about her being uh, hit with the weapons and stuff like that. But you just see this, and it's like, yeah, she's probably getting hit with the weapons. Probably by now. I wonder if she has any videos or any news about her um, since 2015. I'll need to find out about it. I didn't know this was so long ago, guys. Before i got to check into things better. Uh, but I still want to go ahead and play some of this video. It was the other day of an activist, a former Merck employee... turned activist against mandatory vaccinations who was speaking out against SB 277 and a lot of the harassment that she's been going through. It's some pretty hardcore stuff. I need to show you this video, tell you about her story, and then we need to share that so that everyone can see not only the depths that these people who run these corporations now. would go to, uh, to silence any kind of opposition or free thinking about what you put inside your body but also just to show you how late in the game it is for them. More people are speaking out and they're getting desperate. This is Brandy Vaughn. She was giving a speech here and she's seen in several other videos against SB 277. She's a former Merck employee. She sold Vioxx for a number of years. And once she figured out what Vioxx was actually doing to people, that it was killing people, she quit. And she speaks out now against Merck. And we were sent this video, which I'm about to show you, because she's been undergoing some pretty serious harassment ever since she started becoming an activist for this. And I contacted Andrew Leavich, and he's been kind enough to allow us to show this video. So I want you to take a look at this. This is what 
they've been doing to this woman since she started speaking out. Hi, I'm Brandy Vaughn, and for those of you who don't know me, I um, have been an activist speaking out against SB 277 here in California. Wow, what happened to our rights? Yeah. How did I sit back and let this happen? Um, I knew I was going to take some heat for it, how did you but know? I wasn't quite sure how much heat. And I always feel like that guy on um, Lord of the Rings, you know, the, the King King Theoden, where he's like, how did it come to this? Like, I remember say, like saying that in my head a lot to my attackers, like a couple of years ago, just for whole days, I'd be like, how did it come to this? Like, what are people doing? And we know, like, we know as targeted individuals that this is not for the good of society. They're not trying to catch criminals with this stuff. They're not trying to make society safer. They're not trying to make community safer. They're trying to fuck shit up. Uh, sorry for my vernacular, but it, it's, it needs to be that emphasized. They're trying to fuck shit up. They're trying to cause a lot of chaos in every country. Divide, divide, divide. So they divide us from our attackers, and then after they... Tr well, they, this is the plan to kill us off, and then they'll divide the attackers to attack each other, and then all these other different groups divide, 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 and conquer. Uh, there's this great, there's, well, it's not a great video, but it's a, uh, there's a video of Lady Gaga, and she explains how evil works, and she should know, because she, she's one of those people who she's involved, you know, with, with kind of this evil cult, right? She's involved with that. She, you know, she makes her money and stuff like that, and she does what they want. Uh, but she also, you got to realize some of these people that are involved in this, they're split. They're split. Like, they, they think they have a really good side, and then they have a really bad side. Or maybe they're shattered, so that they have one. But, but apparently that day when she was saying, she was talking about evil and how it divides and conquers, divides and conquers. Now, it's really intelligent about that. It's not going to take on the whole public, right? They're not going to hit a bunch of people with this technology, say that they're doing it, and have to face the entire public. They're going to do it to a small percentage, divide out, divide out, and that's how evil works. I was very surprised that, that Lady Gaga would admit that. i got to find that video and show it, but it's, it's true. It's how evil works. They're trying to split up families. They're trying to split up women and men. In, in every country, they're trying to split up black and whites. They're trying to uh, split up, you know, every, you know... Uh, uh, Latino, white, Latino, black. Uh, they're trying to split up uh, ex-military, uh, ex-law enforcement from general public. They're trying to s all these splits, and then they'll split that group, and then they'll split that group. Targeted individuals, right? We've already been split off from society in a certain way. This is what they're trying to do. We can reconnect back. I mean, that like that's that's one of the things in my life. Like I've stayed connected with my family no matter what happens. Even if, and, and my mom believes me, my dad doesn't really believe me. My aunt thinks I'm nuts because she believes everything Dr. Phil says, but I still love them, and I'm still going to connect with them. I'm not going to let this, you know, we've got to, well, I'm getting off the subject, but divide and conquer, divide and conquer. Evil is always manipulating. It's always thinking, how can we divide? How can we control this? What? How can we do something bad and then use that bad thing to gain more control? It's always, it's always like that. Um, I, I feel like, like I've said, you know, good is a sleeping dragon, and right now it's like kind of fla starting to flap its wings and blow fire. I think it, because because good wants to help its own family and wants to live a, a small life and just you know do normal human things and enjoy life and. and make the ones they love happy you know that's what good wants to do it's not always manipulate how can we control things it wants to make the world better and making the world better isn't controlling people free will is what makes the world better uh if used correctly right our creator gave us free will he had a plan in mind he had a plan in mind and then evil men use that gift of free will to try and control others they're trying to control a lot of people on on this earth and that's going directly against our Creator. It's going against God, you know. But I'm getting off the subject. Uh, I just wanted to make this a short one. Um, she'll show you. Uh, she'll, she's going to show you. Um, and what's her name? I want to know her. I want to see.
All right, Brandy. Okay, it's Brandy. What's her last name? Uh, Brandy Vaughn. Okay. I'm going to get better at remembering people so I can bring it up later. This lady that worked for Merck, Brandy Vaughn, instead of just saying, oh, this lady, you know. Um, but let's watch. Let's see what, what they've done, the gang stalking that they've done inside of her home. So I'm making this video today to describe the intimidation tactics that have been used against me to try and silence me. The first one um, happened when I was coming back from the Capitol rally um, in Sacramento against SB 277. And I came home with a friend to um, my hide key being on my on my doorstep, open to the key, and. The story behind this was a year ago when I bought my house, I hid that deep in the bushes. And six months um, ago, I had looked for it because I thought, well, it's probably not a good idea to have a key to my house outside my, right outside my door. Um, I couldn't find it, but when I came back from Sacramento um, that one time, it was about two months ago, that the key was on my doorstep open um, to the key. That day, I had my locks changed and I called an alarm service and I installed um, a $3,000 alarm system two days later. So what happened apparently is someone um, opened the door, the front door, went through the front door, picked the lock and my alarm went off and they immediately disarmed it with the master code which nobody had um, but me. So they disarmed it with the master code which means one of two things. They had access to that alarm company's records to know what her passcode was, or they got it through remote neural monitoring. Um, I guess that the simplest conclusion uh, would be that they just got the information from the uh, alarm company, but it seems like that would be very, very confidential information that it would be hard to just be like, hey, you know, we need that information, even if law enforcement called and said they wanted that information, it would not be given out. So that makes me very suspicious right there that she is being remote neural monitored and, and then whenever she was doing her alarm system, because my, my attackers know my PIN code on my debit card, they know my debit card number, uh, they know all my passwords for everything, so I don't, I don't even try and make the passwords complicated. I use the same thing just so I can remember the passwords, but they know all the, every little secret password and stuff that you have in your life uh, you know, if you are on remote neural monitoring, if you are being remote neural monitored. I made sure nobody else had that code. According to the alarm company, um, at 3.45 in the morning, somebody entered in through the front door, the alarm went off. They disabled the alarm by putting in the master code right away. I guess they could, I guess they could have maybe had something, some surveillance inside of her house and you know saw what buttons she was pushing maybe maybe but this screams at me because this can be done so easily it can just be done to anybody so easily uh remote neural monitoring you know into the panel and then at 3:46 in the morning in the morning my hallway monitor sensor went off um so someone went down the hall and then at 3.48, someone opened my dining room window and then closed it right away. And then if you notice, the dining room window actually faces out towards the backyard, which is much more private than the front door, which they used to enter that time. And then they went over to the keypad, entered the code again, and then left through the front door at 3.49. After the incident, I talked to some security experts who have actually done intimidation for corporations, and they explained a few things. They said, well, A, they were probably tapping your place, so um, everything I say and do in here is listened to, if not watched. And then opening of the back um, window, because it's a much pri more private way to get in for future reference, for future visits. Um, when I did return home, um, 
and the, the, the police came in and made sure nobody was here. And then I came in um, after the alarm was set off, after the break-in. And what I did notice was they had left the, this window unlocked like this. And before I left uh, for Sacramento, all of the windows and doors were locked, double locked actually. I went through twice to make sure that they were locked. So after that happened, I uh, didn't really feel comfortable sleeping in my house again um, because of course they could come in and disarm my alarm whenever they wanted. Um, there wasn't really another way to secure um, the system. I changed the code, but again, who knows how they got the code in the first place. Um, the security expert mm. is pretty convinced that the house is tagged. Uh, my phone is, is is being listened to. My conversation, my text messages, and then um, and that, my like, computer. And you know, I'm, oh. I'm fighting this thing. I'm fighting the need to justify everything because I, you know, this doesn't need to be justified. It's happening. It's happening. Remote neural monitoring exists. Remote neural manipulation exists. A lot of people are having this happen to them. Like they're being picked to be targeted or they're speaking out like I wasn't speaking out about I wasn't a whistleblower I was just a 12 year old kid with Crohn's disease who had a surgery and they saw me as convenient to put me into some kind of program and then went through it but it's happening to whistleblowers it's happening to people from med like that have surgeries it's just happening to a lot of people if you cross the wrong person in your life who has access to this program or putting you in it you can get put into it. Uh, ex-boyfriends or ex-girlfriends that are connected to this uh, can put people in it. So just so many people, and I'm trying to get away from like, I know it sounds crazy when I say remote neural monitoring and they can look through, look through your eyes basically because they're getting a signal from your occipital lobe. Um, I'm gonna stop doing that. I'm gonna really try and stop doing that. This stuff is happening. Uh, this stuff is happening and we just, it, we're at a point where we, we shouldn't be justifying it anymore. Uh, it's happening. We have to deal with it. The world has to deal with it or it, you know, suffer worse than just consequences, suffer the end of humanity. So it's it's just too important. It's happening. I'm going to just probably uh, like as, as we go along, as I go along with videos, I will be just not justifying things, not saying, oh, I know this sounds crazy and all that bull crap that I try and put a disclaimer on everything and just say blah blah. I have a big problem with that because I want to I want to put myself in the shoes of people who maybe really don't believe in this so that I can say how are they thinking? How, how do we need to what do we need to how do we convince them? So I do that a lot. Uh, I don't know. I am you know strategy to a certain point when things are this confusing and crazy just becomes a worrisome thing that doesn't help anybody. Uh, so I want to be strate strategic in the big things, but you know, when we talk about this stuff, just talk about it. You know, just talk about it, how, you, how it's affecting you, what you experience, you know, your knowledge of, of what you're being hit with. And, and I, guess, I guess it depends on who you're talking to, right? I guess it depends on who you're talking to. So, mm. <laughs> Both my computers as well. The next thing that happened actually was with my computer. So um, one of the things that the police um, wanted to know was if anything was taken in the break-in. Of course, nothing was because they weren't here to take anything. I did have a computer here in a hiding spot. And when um, the police were here, I did actually come and look to make sure the computer was still here. And it's um, here above the microwave is its hiding spot. It's not a place anyone would know to look for the computer, and it's not, it, you know, especially in being here in only four minutes. Two days later, after that happened, um, after the break in happened, I walked into my place to move some stuff out, and the computer was taken from its hiding place and put in the middle of the floor. And so I came back home to pick up some stuff. I wasn't staying here any longer. And that message was there, which was obviously very scary because clearly somebody had been listening in, um, if not watching where as to where the computer was. So 
After that, I decided that it would be best to get out of town, and I left um, town for a couple of weeks and really went off the grid for part of the part of that. The day that I came back, I had a friend come with me, and him and I arrived at my place and found a ladder open right in front of my door, looking into the windows, um, the bedroom window. Now, this is my ladder, but this ladder lives in the garage. Um, so it was clear that somebody had accessed the garage, brought out the ladder through the side of my house, opened it, looking right up into the window, and this happens to be the only window that I had blinds open. So that was quite a message. Um, the security experts said, wow, what a better message than, than to say we're watching you. And this actually happened the day that I came back into town, so they clearly knew that, um, well, it happened the night before. Um, they clearly knew when I was coming back. The neighbor who was feeding my dogs came over after half an hour after we found the ladder, and she's like, she asked, so what's with the ladder? And I said, I don't know. I mean, I didn't put it there. And she said, well, it wasn't there yesterday. So it means that it happened the night before I came back into town after two weeks. So clearly they are watching. The next incident um, was just two days later, and that's in the garage. This Buddha was on the floor. Normally, the Buddha is pretty heavy. Um, it was on here, around the house. on top of the, the dog cage. Um, like, I haven't had so much of that happen. I've had a little bit of it here, uh, because I think the maintenance guy is the only one who can do it, because I have a camera outside my place, so he's the only one who can justifiably be on that camera coming into my place. I don't know why that would even be justified, but, like, he, he'll pour out, like, I had this big thing of Arizona iced tea, and uh, I had, like, I'd maybe drink one glass of it, and I came back in from going out one day, and it was, like, half empty, so they do that to me in my in the house that burned down. They would come in and I had those Altera whole house plugs in, in all the walls. They would come in sometimes, my attackers, or not my attackers, the gang stalkers who lived around me, who were doing some of the break-ins and the gang stalking and the weird, like putting weird smells on my property and things like that, flattening my tires and stuff like that. They would come in and they would pull the Altera whole house plugs like halfway out of the outlets and hang them out of the walls. Um, so in, in like a lot of stuff like that, just stuff that you'll see that if you told somebody about, they'd be like, oh, well, that could have just, are you sure you're misremembering? Uh, did you pull it out of the wall halfway? They would ask her, did you put the Buddha down? Are you sure you just, you just aren't misremembering it? So, so little stuff like that, so that you know they've been there, but it's hard to get other people, uh, you know, to listen to you and believe it. Um, to cover it up at night for the dogs. So it was taken off of here, and there's really no way it could have fallen because, I mean, it's actually really heavy, and if it had fallen, it would have fallen, you know, some different way. But I walked in, and I found it right there on the ground. The pictures were also knocked over. So then two days later, I noticed it first through the kitchen window, um, and it's not something I have ever seen before, but there is a duck. On my table. And when I talked to the security experts, I said, I don't understand the duck. And then it came to me that I had been on my phone having a lot of conversations about people asking me, you know, are you staying at your house? What are you gonna do? And I use the term repeatedly, well, I, I'm not staying at my house, I feel like a sitting duck because they can get in at any time. And, you know, I'm a sitting duck. And so that was actually quite disturbing to come home to. Um, yeah, now I have a duck. Kind of stuff um, I have never seen it before, it's not mine. You'll get Nobody else is having access it. that would bring yes. a duck. It just, it's a clear message that Again, they are watching me, and it's quite scary. Yeah, that stuff is very scary, and that's the kind of stuff that these people will do. That is how low 
these pieces of garbage will sink to try and break in and intimidate and harass somebody for their First Amendment rights to speak out against this. I do think that the reason this person's being targeted so hard is because she's a former Merck employee, which gives her more legitimacy in the eyes of the people than just if any person gets up in front of a microphone and starts speaking out about this stuff. But on top of that, this kind of stuff is sadly not uncommon with this type of harassment. I mean, we went and spoke to a security expert as well because we've had some issues and what we were told is that you pretty much have to get rid of your phone at this point if you think your phone has been bugged those programs can hide on your phone they are so small and so hard to find the problem is it's it's, the problem is it's like i um we people have to start realizing that you are the thing they can tap into like that's the biggest thing that people have to realize because like i took my phone off one day and the keys and I, I it took everything out of my pockets and nothing on me just my like my glasses and i didn't even wear a hat at that time and i just walked out just walked out into the woods near where my parents lived and i just walked because i was getting the v2k and getting hit and i walked for like probably a mile and i, I was still getting v2k and i was still getting hit with external weapons and they could still hear you know what I was saying they were still remote my attackers were still remote neural monitoring me and I had, the phone was like a mile away from me uh, but I, I do think that they do use the phone surveillance uh, as, a, as a redundant system so it can help to get rid of it I just I, I'm having a hard time getting rid of mine you know um, she's gonna she's talking about she says you can buy like a cricket phone that you those disposable ones um, I guess it's supposed to be a little bit more. It would take less time if you just bought a new phone, a brand new phone. We were also told that, that a lot of people, what they like to do in cases where they think that they are going to be repeatedly targeted for harassment is to just simply get the cheap, you know, cricket phone or whatever, the, the throwaway phones that you can buy and keep for a little while and get a new one. Okay, guys, I just wanted to show you all that information, and I'll put the, the, uh, the video like use, and the article in situation- link in the description. I can't believe this This was 2015, and I, I just found out about it. I was just looking through TrueStream Media's videos, um, and then went and looked for the article afterwards. But um, I'm going to try and like see what's going on um, with... I already forgot her name, but I'm, I'm going to see what's going on with her and whether things have, have stopped, the targeting has stopped, or it's continued. I don't know if there's any more news about her, um, but but I'll try, and, I'll try and get you guys an update on that. But I just mainly wanted to show, you know, this is a high-profile person that's speaking out against vaccines who was an employee of Merck uh, Pharmaceuticals, and so she's, you know, being targeted for speaking out. Um, all right, guys, that's it today. Um, I love y'all. I love y'all a lot. Uh, this this uh, electromagnetic transcranial stimulation device is working so good. It just does chafe the ear. So I, you, there are gel pads that, that I'm probably going to switch off. I'll probably use the gel pads for a day or two and then, then go back to these ear things because I don't have to replace the ear things. Um, so a lot of hope a lot of hopeful things i'm still really tired and i'm still getting targeted and i still have the v2k even now it's like i can't understand what they're saying but it's like murmur 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 um but there's a lot of hope guys and let's just let's just keep moving forward a lot of people are getting a lot of great information out um and i guess that's it um i i'll you know have more i may do a live stream like later this week or this weekend uh, I may try and space space it out a little bit until I get my original channel back. I don't know. I'm just what I'm trying to do right now, and this is important for us. Even in this chaos, even in this chaos, and where we we feel like we're always on our heels, we're always getting punched in the face by this targeting. We have to find a balance, you know, um, because we've got a ways to go upstream. And I hate saying that, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope that I'm very wrong. And I hope God proves me wrong by bringing us some huge miracles to just stop this whole thing. Um, but it's like it seems like we got a ways to go, and balance is important. 
like balance survival is definitely number one but you got to try and balance your life so I'm gonna really be focusing on you know getting my condo cleaned up getting my act together uh, doing some things that are on um, you know that I don't want to put out on videos yet I'm working on some things that I don't want to give away uh, like you know with with the hospital that I think actually implanted me and then other other legal things I just don't want to say anything right now but I'm going to be working on some things of my own and, and balancing how I fight this you know balancing the activism with and also you know uh, spending as much time as I can with my family because uh, I know I'll regret that um, I'll regret that if I don't do it and it makes me feel better for all of this but I'm definitely not going to stop making videos or anything it's just like y'all may not see me for a couple of days or something like that um, yeah I guess I just want to let y'all know um, but I'm still going to be making videos and I, I may you know I could make a live stream tonight it's just kind of like do I have important information do I feel inspired to make a video and I've been making videos for so long that you know this a video every day and just feeling like I gotta do something that I'm gonna try and balance that out more with uh, with other things that I'm doing to fight this in my life but not not leave and may not change anything I may not change anything but I just want to let y'all know how I'm feeling you know um, all right guys I love y'all stay strong if you if you are a targeted individual and you have a job and you have some money that you can spend I would I would recommend this transcranial elect, uh, electromagnetic transcranial stimulation device it's CES Ultra if you are getting remote neural manipulation in like nerve pain and body pain and it feels like it's from the the high pitched ringing sound and what's going on with your head like what your attackers are doing to your head if it feels like you're getting body pains and stuff this does help um, I'm not a doctor so I'm not gonna I don't don't prescribe it and I can't order y'all to get it so I just want to let y'all know it really is even doing this video uh, that surface forced uh, and physical anxiety uh, so reduced so reduced and I can think better the memory thing wasn't as bad I gotta use it for a little bit longer though guys you know I gotta use it for a month because my attackers could be just hey, let's let's stop attacking him so hard for a while and then he'll he'll tell everybody to go buy this and then uh, you know and then we'll just you know go through it I don't think that's what's happening but I have to be careful you know I have to be careful for for picking out my own defenses and when I tell y'all stuff because I, I want to be sure when I tell y'all I also do want to protect myself a little bit guys and this is why I'm kind of like well I can't tell y'all to go out and buy this but I, I can say like it's really working for me I, I am a little bit worried about like people who are not targeted individuals who would like maybe try and hit me with that they, they'd call me and say hey I got that device and it didn't help me and they're not a targeted individual but they just want to like you know uh, mess with me or whatever or make me try and make me stop suggesting defenses and stuff so I want to kind of protect my, myself a little bit from that but it definitely is working really good right now um, it's just this stuff gets so complicated and you, you, we gotta you know we've got to help people and, and uh, help people to survive help people to get defenses just do what's right you know and put out information but protect yourself you know have have little layers of protection um, you know so people so perpetrators and infiltrators can't use stuff against you and come at you and, and make your life hard you know um, which that's an ongoing battle right Okay, guys, I love y'all, um, and definitely, definitely I will see y'all in the next one.